This morning on Daybreak, we find out what Cox Health plans are after it's given a new $600,000 grant. And with package theft being a nationwide problem, we'll tell you some tricks you can use to outsmart porch pirates. Also, as gifts circulate the mail this time of year, a warning of what not to put in your greeting cards will explain this morning here on Daybreak. Good morning and welcome back into the show. It's Friday, December 13th. Thanks for kicking off your weekend with us. I'm Lauren Varnas. And I'm Joe Morano as we are set. Can't have spooky Friday the 13th stuff though. It's too Christmassy, right? It's too merry to be spooky. Yeah, that's what I I'm thinking. I guess we might jinx ourselves on that. Hopefully nothing happens. Yeah, well, we got the next two hours, so we'll see how it goes. Starting off pretty pleasant though this morning as meteorologist Elisa Rafa joins us. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Um, still not bad out there. We're still kind of smooth sailing and what I've been calling not so bad for December. Not so bad for December. <laughs> we see you running around though. You're forecasting for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the weekend forecast by Sunday, Monday gets interesting, and I've got some more updates on that coming up in a little bit. But we've got some temperatures, uh, again, not so bad on the warmer side of things for a morning in December. It's 37 degrees in Springfield right now with mostly cloudy skies and southerly winds. So that's what's keeping those temperatures pretty mild for us this morning. Uh, it's mostly cloudy out there, maybe some sprinkles in West Plains, but we've got a pretty dry air mass in place for right now. Temperatures are about where they were yesterday, where it's not that much colder, not that much warmer. It's 37 degrees in Springfield, 37 degrees in Branson, and 38 in Ava. Winds are out of the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and that's what's keeping us warm. We stay dry through the day today. We'll have a mix of sunny clouds. And again, those temperatures on the mild side for December in the lower 50s again, 53 degrees by dismissal, still not all that bad. We turn colder by tomorrow as some uh, cold air comes in on north and west winds behind a front. Still looking at a wintry mix possible Sunday and Monday. I've got some updates to the forecast and they still want to uh, pin down some of these uncertainties. So we're going to talk about that. And then after that storm passes next week, looks quiet. Your full forecast is up in 10 minutes. New for you this morning, as you may know, package theft is a nationwide issue that happens every year, especially now around the holidays. That's why our Color 10's Nigel McDonald met with local law enforcement and joins us this morning to share ways you can outsmart porch pirates. Nigel. Well, good morning, Lauren and Joe. That's right. Now, did you know roughly 36% of people report having a package stolen at least once? Well, Justin Warnow with the Republic Police Department says prevention is key, especially as package deliveries become more and more common. Warnow says surveillance cameras like Ring can be helpful. However, a thief might still be able to get away with your packages. Warnow shares other ways to keep your items safe. One of the things that I usually like to do is if I know I'm not going to be available for package, I try to either send it to an address of a family member that I know will be home or I let a neighbor know to keep an eye on my residents. Sometimes on websites you can choose whether you can ask for a signature. Yeah, and there's still a lot of ways for people to try and help out one another, you know, because you don't want to be left alone in your neighborhood and uh, susceptible to all that, right? I'd have your back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I found an app that is called eNeighbor, okay. which you can see right here. And this app allows your neighbors to actually help you with your packages. Now, how it works is the app will connect you with a local store or a neighbor who might be able to receive your deliveries. Now, the app says all e-neighbors are verified and will share your package up to 300 bucks. But there's a catch. It's only 250 though, per package. So I guess it's not really a catch. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you pay, you pay a little bit, and yeah. you have to have trust in humanity, I guess. Yes. They're verified, but... Yeah, I don't know. Would you Would you guys consider it? I think it's worth it to try and make sure that your gifts are kept safe. You know what if I mean? If you have no other option, yeah, I think yeah. it's something to look at. Yeah. Okay. You can't just rely on Santa <laughs> the whole time. So, you know, you got to make sure that the he, mail carriers are taken care of, He too. needs all the help he can get this time of year. <laughs> well, if you have a smartphone, you can definitely check it out. Okay, okay. Nigel. Nice. Thank you, Nigel. And if it's not packages, cards are often sent through the mail this time of year. Often a lot of gifts in those cards, whether it's cash, checks, or even gift cards. One bank in the Ozarks says to be careful, though, of how you send those gifts through. Arvest Bank is warning its customers that one of the worst things you could do is send cash in the mail and giving it electronically is more efficient. You can do that using an app or email. Darlin Mabins is a branch manager at Arvest and explains if you're skeptical about sending money the electronic way, just talk with your bank. And if you still insist on sending through the mail, there are ways to make sure it's delivered to the right hands. 
sending it in a way that you have to get a signature to know that it's made it. So it's a little bit safer versus sticking it in an envelope, putting a postage stamp in it, and sending it in the mail that way. If you're going to send something, I would send a check or a cashier's check. At least you have a means of stopping it, getting it reissued through your bank, versus cash is gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. There's no way to recover that. Also, it is getting close to the deadline for basic shipping to deliver before Christmas. We've got those deadlines from all top mail carriers posted over on OzarksFirst.com for you. Advocacy groups for sexual assault victims are excited for Cox Health's $600,000 grant. Typically, a victim will come into the hospital to get forensic tests done for sexual assault or domestic abuse. Nurses with proper training perform these tests, but there aren't often a ton of nurses qualified, especially in rural areas. The grant money will provide that training for nurses at three rural Cox Health hospitals. It also provides telehealth systems. Once you start to get into more rural communities, it is harder for victims to access those services. And so it's super exciting uh, for the victim and for our community to utilize technology in an innovative way to not just leverage resources and make the most use of them and be good stewards of our dollars, but also serve more people. Cox Health expects this to go into effect in early 2020. Here's a story with your right to know this morning. A Springfield man charged with murder has pleaded guilty in court. Brandon Johnson was charged with second degree murder and armed criminal action in November of 2017. Police say Johnson killed his half brother, Danny Dayton. He will be sentenced next on January 6th. The Missouri State University Board of Governors has approved the first step of the Idea Commons project. MSU President Cliff Smart tweeted out yesterday the board accepted a letter of intent with the Vicino Group. Our past reporting shows the plan is to expand the Jordan Valley Innovation Center and connect it to a multi-purpose complex with office space across the street as well as adding more parking. The hope is to attract new companies to downtown Springfield. We don't have all the details quite yet, including the Cost. Two lawsuits to tell you about this morning. As you may recall, that $2.4 billion dispute over the Kansas Expressway extension on the south side of town has now been thrown out of court. The news leader reports a judge dismissed the lawsuit filed by Dr. Gil Mobley in September. The court said the suit lacked standing, and Mobley named 25 people for what he called ecological harm because of the project. The extension has been in the works for the de for decades, actually. It'll build onto Kansas Expressway at Republic Road all the way to Nixa to help reduce traffic. However, more land has to be purchased before construction can begin. Now, Dr. Mobley lives in the neighborhood near where the extension would be built. He says he's actually relieved the judge dismissed that suit because of the toll it took on him. He tried to submit a documentary claiming the project would disrupt nearby caves in the area as well, but that was determined insufficient for the court. Some other legal news to pass along. The former principal of Hillcrest High School is suing Springfield Public Schools. 61-year-old Gary Moore claims he was targeted for removal because of his age. The news leader also reports Moore was given more positive reviews until 2018. The lawsuit claims in the next school year, Moore's supervisors alleged he lacked enthusiasm, commitment, and trust in Superintendent John Jungman. Moore says younger participants, or principals rather, were not subjected to comments about enthusiasm. Another issue in the suit, Moore says he was told to improve graduation and attendance rates if he wanted to keep his job. Months later, his contract was not renewed. Moore wants $25,000 in damages for lost wages and career opportunities. SPS is responding to the lawsuit. Top officials strongly deny all the claims and believe the district acted appropriately. We move to a traffic alert for you for drivers along Highway 65 near Branson. Starting Monday, MoDOT crews will start bridge repairs at Bear Creek just north of Branson on Highway 65. One southbound lane will have to be closed during the repairs, and that should be finished by December 27th. MoDOT warns you to, that slowdowns and backups are possible in that area throughout the closure. Still ahead for you this morning, former NFL players are charged with conning money from the league's health care program. That's right. We'll explain the scheme to get million dollar payouts and who was involved next in your Money Watch. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. 
This is Color 10 News Daybreak.